Radiant team back. Dire team ban. Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to uh, your epicenter coverage. The European qualifier. A lot of conspiracy going up against Team Spirit, Team Spirit. Like, saying con they convincingly won game number one team would be a very, remaining. very, very, very big understatement. Five right. seconds remaining. Double the way the go. Mm. Team Spirit, just Result dominating time. performance, not even taking 15 minutes to take one up against London Conspiracy. London Conspiracy, they were asking for it, they were begging for it, they were on their knees. They played very, very passive lanes, they had no real roaming influence at all. The Enigma's Radiant first thing was like, it was like a decent black hole. Actually no, it was, it was a haste charge into mid which could kill the puck. The and trees. really, they got outplayed in the mid. And Dyer we're going down a similar road again. Under Conspiracy, actually, this time, they ban out the OD um, and the Broodmother's removed, so we're down to just the Invoker uh, and the Queen of Pain, which are the only four heroes that Baby Knight's been playing recently. Unless he wishes to mix things up a little bit. Uh, but this is where we're sitting at. They just brought off a pickup from Gold Black, support everywhere, Phonix brilliant on it, and Ten it's very, seconds. very easy to play. Also let people know what's up for, up for grabs in this. Uh, for Ten the EU seconds. and uh, CIS qualifier, um, basically, Radiant we're currently in the quarterfinal. So this is a quarterfinal, best of three. Uh, the winner will go to the wild card stage, and uh, I believe it's six divided teams plus two teams from the open qualifier. So it's I don't fully understand it myself, but all I know is that we have to get teams through this qualifier, and the winner of this game will play up against the winner of Vega versus Diggity, which is being played tomorrow night. And uh, yeah, so it is no Diggity. It is Cinderin's new team, which will actually be replacing, I believe that was actually Team Empire. Uh, no, 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 sorry, the Team Empire game was postponed. No Diggity was actually invited. I helped check them. Um, yeah, so the winner of Vega vs Diggity tomorrow night will play up against the winner of the game. The loser of this game will drop in the lower bracket, and I believe they will play up against, it could either be Na'Vi or up against uh, one of the other opponents. Yeah. I mean, out the way, Na'Vi actually lost. So we've only had one full game played out from the European qualifier, and that was DB versus Na'Vi. That was the best of three series that was played just before Na'Vi traveled to the Dota Pit land, and then had their results they had there. Um, so that was kind of harsh for them, but they dropped down to the lower bracket, and their game, I believe, is scheduled like six days uh, It gets played. That's the state of this tournament. We do have a whole bunch of other qualifiers still going on as well. The American qualifiers getting very close to the end. Complexity and Archon are actually in the upper bracket final for that one. For all the details all right. of this tournament, I believe it is epicenter.com, or you can just go to joindota.com. We have all as well. The SEA qualifier is also drawing to a close. Fnatic and MVP Phoenix are in the upper Dyer bracket final for that back. one with TNC uh, recently el eliminating Mineski. So we're actually down to three teams the Southeast Asian Qualifier, and those games are actually played out, I believe we actually get through two of them tomorrow, so if you're always feeling for that one, we'll be Ten up and early, remaining. and we also have the Chinese Qualifier, which is doing a pre-qualifier right now, um, but we'll go into the main qualifier, we've got VG, Newbie, CDEC, E-Home, IG, Vitality, who are actually right now appear to be the better IG squad, and LGD, and two more teams still to qualify into the pre-qualifiers, where we've got, uh, in one of them, we've got the grand final of Tongfu versus, uh, wait, that's Tongfu versus IG, um, interesting. Uh, we may have a bit of a mistag on our, Ten on our thing remaining. there. By the way, um, it's like IG, Vit, and Tongfu, CDEC, A, FTD, A, VGR, uh, VG Reborn, who actually completely crushed the original VG team. Like, it wasn't even close. Uh, RTK, made it so hard um yeah uh and they're playing up against wings who uh right now looking to be a team that can capitalize on the changes in the chinese scene everyone's everyone's moving uh in a way where they're very unstable focused so yeah wings are really trying to capitalize on that they should be able to qualify for a couple of lands while china is in such a disarray uh probably say by before 
we should have ourselves at least a good TI. Maybe not a great vanilla major, um, but still a good TI. Let's get back to this game as we have gone through our draft. Um, Puck and the Enchantress ban out. No surprise there. Sea Spirit this time around, they're going to earlier pick up the Oracle. It was the fifth ban from London Spirits in the last game. They're worried that the Oracle would just be the magical Five nuke damage remaining. with the amount of damage the Draw Ranger also off. Team Spirit have that option Reserve again. Time. They don't have the Enchantress for all the big rotations, but even then, like, you can just try and win on lane presence alone. And you got a Natus Prophet. <laughs> Who needs an Enchantress for rotations when you got a Natus Prophet? Uh, so we could be looking at the uh, at three games in a row for Illidan to play that Drow Ranger. The Enchantress and Puck being taken out, like, there's a lot of other options for that. So it kind of feels like Solon is just trying to plug the leaks that at least he saw. Game one, and that's the strength of those heroes. Void, again, like all four same bands by Goblack. He doesn't change a single thing. He's making that offlane really difficult for London Conspiracy to draft for. No Lone Droid, no Beastmaster, no Faceless Void, no easy combos to really play with. The Bounty Hunter, like, kind of also interesting that you ban um, the hunter. Enchantress after you've picked a Bounty Radiant Hunter. Because Bounty Hunter pick. thrives being able to just cripple the junglers or leech their experience his powerhouse right there. Now, he's not going to get that if Teen Spirit focus purely on laning phase. Now, up against a Titan Hunter, they need to be able to do that. They also need to have some good reveal on a Bounty Hunter, so I, I look for Goblack to... Uh, actually, he may just go in the Oracle Abaddon combo. Sephotic Shield obviously dispel back. Uh, your laning phase remaining. is going to weak if you do that, and that could be another reason. Well, Solon could have just held off when the title pick time. really wanted to. Okay, well, Goblack like is not. This has got to be a draw. Like, even, like, yeah, the Enchantress with her Slither and Pettis, like, did a lot of damage when those fights became, like, started earlier on, but this just means your timing is more push orientated. He's someone that can deal with a tide hunter, and Drow's actually really good with. It. Not good once the uh, once she remaining. ventures too far away from the protection of her team, because then the bounty comes close Five and then turns everything remaining. off. Um, or the tide gets a blink dagger falls out. Crystal Maiden. That is very difficult to keep. Crystal Maiden Radiant pick up. Team pick. Going that over the witch doctor. Uh, that's. Okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> ah, Goblack. You like, you like it. Another signature Illidan hero. He won't be coupled with the Wisp in this game. Unless they're going to run a mid Oracle. Ten seconds remaining. Not as big fan of that one. Yeah, Death Prophet would would have made a lot nicer pick up. I agree with that one. Pushing power into towers is crazy. Chaos Dying Knight's now just this executioner. Crystal Maiden is so dead. Like, at the start of every fight, Oracle can just nuke Crystal Maiden into Oblivion. Chen can actually amplify that, or nuke her himself. And they just Prophet still got Wrath of Nature. So the Crystal Maiden surviving is going to be very difficult. The reveal game against the Bounty Hunter will be interesting to watch. Uh, so will the success of the Titan Hunter offlane. Chaos Knight's not Ten that brilliant against the Tide Hunter, obviously, but really against Tide is never a, a positive remaining. thing. Uh, unless they try and go for a good gank, and that's probably going to be the weakness Reserve of Tide Hunter, is knowing when to fall back. So we have to watch the warding very closely of the Tide offlane, because that'll give him an inkling of when the Chen's going to rotate over. At all of the times he wants to be in point blank range of Chaos Knight, go ahead and range for Anchor Smash, farm up heavily, and get a lot of experience. If he stays too long, You've got both Chaos Bolt and Reality Rift, Chaos Knight, to keep the Titan Hunter in position, plus the Oracle's Fortune End. Like, uh, alright? Fortune's End. I always get, like, Fortune's End and False Promise, like, mixed in my brain. But, yeah, you got to have the Fortune's End to actually stop Ten the Titan Hunter for a remaining. bit, too. And then Goldblack will come in with Jed Army, find the kill on the Titan Hunter, and then push harder. And an Ember Spirit Radiant pick up. Pick. Not bad against Nature's Prophet. Again, though, we're looking at a whole bunch of heroes that require farm before they... Still before they do anything, because Voker can actually do a lot early on, but he can't use rotating support to make that work. 
So the bounty hunter is probably going to be our bigger thing. So we got, I got two things I want to see from London Conspiracy. Positioning for their offlane to see how remaining. how aggressive the tie can play. Um, and the second Five thing is the bounty hunter remaining. rotations. So what the Crystal Maiden does, I don't even really care about. Like she's going to do pulling on the top Reserve lane, throw the lane for the Ember Spirit, so you can get farm over. Them. That's just going to be her thing. Farm a little bit with Frostbite, and she can go around with the Cheng. But more than likely, if uh, if that rotation's coming in from Cheng. Is coming towards the mid to catch out the invoker, so crystal mains can be too far away from that. So that'd be like carry TP and come in. Uh, but then you could just lose both the crystal maiden as well as the invoker. The Saint is proper will also TP service. into that, and we get a wind ranger last pickup. That'll be the mid in mid wind ranger. Physical damage against the towers, um, obviously with focus fire, not bad against the heroes. I'm actually thinking this is a good Deso game. There's not a huge amount of armor for London Conspiracy. You kind of make them paper. I know a lot of the damage is magical anyway, but it really helps Chaos Knight find the kill and move on to his next target. Uh, which is why my like, first reason my brain went to Desolator. And the second is Team Spirit really want a way where they can put down the building nice and quickly. Now, they're going to have an army behind them. But the army can be destroyed pretty quickly by the Ember Spirit. You've got to try and have a way where you, seconds, especially remaining. if you're looking to go high ground, where you can make those buildings a lot more susceptible to the physical damage Five while you're there. Remaining. Have, obviously having a whole bunch of Chaos Knights helps with that, but also it could be a detriment. Because Ember Spirit's Slider Fist, obviously really great once he gets his battle. Prepare for battle. Right. Hello TP, always want to fly on the run. Viv is already making his way up, so always want to fly... He wants to watch the rotations more than anything else. So yeah, you see this ward right here. It's, it's still a D ward position because you could just throw a sentry like around this area here. If you look for the ward here or there or... Well, um, you don't really care about this damn point. Because you just have faith in Funnick to do his job. And you got a lot of faith in Funnick to do that. He's one of these guys that with a little bit of Trent Micro, like, stopped on the offlane. Searching for the bounty. 30 seconds In and out of invis. Back. This bounty hunter looks like he's on a job just to try and screw with the Chen. Throws down his sentry ward. There is no scouting of him. I want to watch Gold Black's positioning then. Like, what does he do? I haven't still, I still haven't seen this uh, offlane observer ward for the Tide Hunter. Is coming down there now. Obviously, he's not going to take this as Baby Knight, so Iceberg and Baby Knight, obviously, the first to get the runes. Every coin helps. Oh, and they're switching the lanes. Oh, this this is so clever. So, Funic, Funic runs the safe lane. Kura is in the wrong position now. Kur the courier is making his way out, but it looks like God Black's already here to ferry that item. And then he'll move into the Dire Jungle. The Overlord gets placed down by Biver, so now they can see to the mid. The Sentry Ward from Iceberg is a little bit too far away, but now sees where Biver is. Instantly into the Wind Run, does as much damage as possible. And now he gets his salve, so... Um, Iceberg's in a really good position. This top lane, Ild and Noise want to fly together. Deloping and Solon, like, this is, this is a horrible lane. For a crystal maiden, she needs to stay close enough that, that she can stop the attack if Illidan decides to initiate. Radiance bottom tower is under Galba's attack. gonna ping again. The fact quartered and Viv is also just gonna follow him to the end. Yeah. Or like, can you please save me that wild wing? Should be fine by the time he gets there. At least he gets one creep. Crystal maiden's just gonna be dead on this like He gets caught out too far. You want level two over on the chaos knight? That's what makes that possible. The Searing Chains leveled. Oh, yeah, she hasn't done anything yet. Goldblack. There's no Shuriken Toss, obviously, for Bounty Hunter. But he's not farming, so Biver and Goldblack are going to stay on the same levels. Goldblack also pinged out, saying like he knows exactly where he is. They start the tornado. Just force in the lane. Like, yeah, it's a three on three, but then Fortune's end, and the one second's done. Okay, that... That just looked a little too easy. Biver will cut to the tree line. 
The strike into the mid, Iceberg. Oh, that Forge Spirit. Trying to remove more armor. Iceberg may have to salve up for a moment. Yeah, he will as he goes up the hill. Forge Spirit's probably going to cancel it. Yeah, it does. Only removes one of the armor. Still a combo from Baby Knight. Shows you also the mentality here of Team Spirit. They are so happy about this. Like, Vivus now come down to the bottom lane. Trying to find an opening on Funic who's going up against the Tide. Tide's going to be very, very happy with this lane. And he's up against melee units and a little bit of chip damage from Funic. Until Funic gets the phase boots, really that much of a threat. Yeah. Go. But he also understands the fact, like, it's, an, it's a trade-off. Funic is still going to get levels in this lane, and when he TP's up to the top lane, they're going to lose more. Tide comes in with the Ravage. That may do a little bit of work, but it won't do enough. These ganks need to work, but the Sentry's wards is down. So Funic is well aware of Viva's presence here. And that will allow top lane to then engage. Yep, they take out the Ember Spirit. And Crystal Maiden can just be do like dove right now. -uh. Like Iceberg as well as Baby Knight, I don't think they, they can even help like on that top lane. Like Team Spirit don't want his help. The Invoker can't leave the mid lane. Like he's the only lane right now. She's not even doing well. Like it's 6 2 on Baby Knight against the 17 6 of Iceberg. This mid lane has just been outplayed. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Again, we're looking at a point where all the CS on all the lanes is going the way of Team Spirit, apart from this bottom lane, which is the Kafka lane. As I say, like, this this isn't a good trade off, because Phonics is going to take all the levels and all the farm that he's got and pump it into something a lot more damaging. And with Phase Boost, now we can actually battle with the physical damage of Kafka. Okay, he's just standing his ground. Like, he doesn't care. Like, you, you can attack him for 64 damage all you want. He's not gonna achieve anything. And Goldbice got gotten space from, from Biver. Biver looks a little lost. Like, he's not certain if he's meant to be ganking at the bottom. Like, he's gonna secure the 4 minute rune right now. Uh, and this can be picked up by... Well, then again, you, you don't even give it to Bounty Hunter, uh, to Bayonet. Goldbice is farming up in the jungle, and Biver is not stalking him. So the Chen is finding levels. Funic is still having the time of his life. The Sentry Wall is now going to reveal the fact that Biver is here. Triggers the phase boost, gets back up into the tower, and Biver... Wow, you're too close here. You're way too close here. And with no Ghost Walk, Funic's going to get himself a kill! The Dark Creek Wave was looming, but Funic ends up surviving this. In 10 mana, he'll probably just TP back to base by a TP scroll and come back out again. But Team Spirit aren't, aren't going to just, like, hold on their laurels now. They want to attack even further. Goldblank attaching for Baby Knight. It's a double controller, but Baby Knight will still go down. Iceberg will shift the, the uh, aggro off him. Really good movement from Goldblank, and they get to go now up on the top lane as well. Fortunes end over on top of Jalopy. Held him with a two second stun. That heal is now starting to kick in, but always want to fly. Obviously, he just throws another nuke on top of him. And that heal, which always want to fly, she provided towards the Emisphere, it won't do anything. The Crystal Maiden will also pop 6 0 with five minutes in. Team Spirit, they've got this game by the throat, and they are throttling. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Efker is the only hope. Now that he actually has Ravage, but what do you do with the Ravage? Can't get close enough on the top lane to really fight. You remember's not doing enough damage. So all you can really do is try, well... Then you can try for a solo kill, but then you're gonna burn a huge AoE ulti controller. That Jalopy, he can't even cut himself through. Three seconds on the sun, and then Illidan blocks his path with a great reality rift. He's a little lucky on the distance part of it. And looks like Kefka as well. There's Prophet, he's gonna create a whole bunch of trees. Oh wow, if he doesn't get this kill, the sun strikes on the way in, but Kefka's dying in a moment, because it's gonna be two attacks from Funic. He blew Ravage and doesn't even find a kill on Funic. That is the ultimate disaster right now, Spelunt the Conspiracy. Teen Spirit are all over him like a hot rash. Elden's gonna chase after Solon as well. Untroll comes down, the courier actually helps give vision over on Solon. Just sitting on top of him as well, and Solon knows he can't do anything about it. But he gets a little bit of money killing off the troll of Goldblack. But we are now 9-0. Bounty rotation was also scattered out before. When he came in and, and he, uh, he ghost walked here, he thought he was invis, but he actually wasn't. Uh, uh, sorry, he, he wasn't being seen, but he actually wasn't. I spoke in a... Yeah, 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 yeah. He wants this. Just an easy time power shot. Gonna miss that one. But his physical damage is not gonna be enough. 
Dyer's top tower. Wrath of Nature was also on cooldown. Hello, bottom lane. Subsonic dropping low. Kafka. Can he even? No, he can't. Always want to fly. The Sun Strike. Funnic. He walked back into it. LC will finally get themselves one kill on the board. Again, they lost the Bounty Hunter. It's still going to be worth it considering how much he is, like... You give Tide more. <laughs> it's still like, he's building a 4 stuff. Or is he? No, he's actually going for the mech. So, see, this, this is... Ah, feels odd. Feels very, very odd. Go for the early mech because you understand the team spirit of forcing a team fight, but the mech won't offset enough of the damage. Baby Knight's also going to go down. Iceberg, easy shackle. Uh, just uses the sprout to set up for it. Iceberg probably could have moved and dodged that sun strike that was coming in. Phantom Man will not pass. Ah! That's not even a crit! That's not even a crit! And his base damage onto a level 4 Crystal Maiden who has two branches, one for each hand. Oh. Ah, this is painful. Hey, this is hemorrhoids right here is what this is. Just burns. He could never sit comfortably. Yeah, so the reason why I was a little off about this, like the mech build over on Kafka, the only mech I could then battling against Team Spirit, but what does it really enable them to do? Do you then team up with the Invoker? Like, Invoker requires Hand of Midas. He needs to play catch up, also needs levels. Now, the Ember Spirit is never going to get anything in this race. Like, he just picked up a bottle, but it's what does the mech grant you? Like, it's a little bit of extra sustain. You've already got your Ravage, which is kind of useless at this point. Because it's an ultimate which won't do enough damage. Like, Hand of God will be out of repair. And the stun duration time doesn't really set up for anything as well. See, because I don't really have a, like, a good combination. And that's, that's where the tide is for me. Like, this little, like, laning wise it seems better. See, now you trigger the Ravage. There's no Hand of God. I don't have an extra life back, but now Illidan, oh, he wants, he really wants Baby Knight, and he's got the damage as well, and with a three second stun over on Viva, Fortune's there from always in a flight, they're giving as much life back to Illidan as possible, he may still pot trick here, no, nope, the armlet toggles himself back up again, three heroes lost for LC, always on a fly and makes a break for the tree line, but with money behind him, he can potentially sprout and buy some more space here for the Oracle, even if he doesn't, it doesn't matter, a four second stun, the TP's down for the Titan, so they realize that was happening, but a 17-2, you got one kill on an HS Prophet who kind of, like, it was just funny screwing up a little bit, walking into a sun strike, not seeing it coming. Um, obviously, we have the sight, so we can see that coming. But it's just more game sense. And then you and then you lose an Oracle. After he already managed to save Illidan. And that combination, they're like, even that is a wombo combo. The Chaos Knight as well as the Oracle, it may not seem it because it's not a heavy nuking combo, even though Oracle has that himself. But it's the fact that Illidan can just sustain for so damn long. Like, he's probably getting himself ready to fight this. Like he was waiting for the Anchor Smash. Now your reality ripped him back in again. You can turn that armor on in just a moment. The Sun Strike's gonna come in. Illidan not even getting caught in between toggles. They're trying to do it, but the tie is down for the count. Always when a fly runs away. He's actually got his false promise up again at the moment, but it's Gold Black rotating him from behind. This game, like, we haven't even seen a tier 2 tower go down, but it's already over. GG is the call. The players will agree. We actually get through this entire series without clocking 25 minutes worth of game time on the board. London Conspiracy have just had the boot firmly shoved to up the rectum. Team Spirit looking solid, laning good, but it felt like London Conspiracy gave them the space to do whatever the hell they wanted again. London Conspiracy, this isn't what I expect from them. Like, they they were playing before such great lane, like, presence heroes, I think is the word I'm really searching for here, as they just move. They moved so well before. The Broodmother mid was a great plague, it's taken out, and then